All the art of living lies in a fine mingling of letting go and holding on. The absence of flaw in beauty is itself a flaw. The sun, the moon, and the stars would have disappeared long ago, had they happened to be within the reach of predatory human hands. There is nothing that war has ever achieved that we could not better achieve, without it. Dancing is the loftiest, the most moving, the most beautiful of the arts, because it is no mere translation or abstraction from life, it is life itself. Jealousy, that dragon which slays love under the pretense of keeping it alive. All civilization has from time to time become a thin crust over a volcano of revolution. Dreams are real as long as they last. Can we say more of life? Pain and death are part of life. To reject them is to reject life itself. The place where optimism most flourishes is the lunatic asylum. The promised land always lies on the other side of a wilderness. It is on our failures that we base a new and different and better success. What we call progress is the exchange of one nuisance for another nuisance. To be a leader of men one must turn one's back on men. The family only represents one aspect, however important an aspect, of a human being's functions and activities. A life is beautiful and ideal or the reverse, only when we have taken into our consideration the social as well as the family relationship. A sublime faith in human imbecility has seldom led those who cherish it astray. However well organized the foundations of life may be, life must always be full of risks. Sex lies at the root of life, and we can never learn to reverence life until we know how to understand sex. Education whatever else it should or should not be, must be an inoculation against the poisons of life and an adequate equipment, in knowledge and skill, for meeting the chances of life. At the present day, the crude theory of the sexual impulse held on one side, and the ignorant rejection of theory altogether on the other side are beginning to be seen as both alike unjustified. I always seem to have a vague feeling that he is a Satan among musicians, a fallen angel in the darkness who is perpetually seeking to fight his way back to happiness. The omnipresent process of sex, as it is woven into the whole texture of our man's or woman's body, is the pattern of all the process of our life. Socialism also brings us up against the hard rock of eugenic fact, which, if we neglect it, will dash our most beautiful social construction to fragments. The sanitary and mechanical age we are now entering makes up for the mercy it grants to our sense of smell by the ferocity with which it assails our sense of hearing. It is becoming clear that the old platitudes can no longer be maintained, and that if we wish to improve our morals, we must first improve our knowledge. Every artist writes his own autobiography. Charm, which means the power to affect work without employing brute force, is indispensable to women. Charm is a woman's strength, just as strength is a man's charm. In philosophy, 
It is not the attainment of the goal that matters. It is the things that are met with by the way. Birth control is affecting and promising to affect many functions in our social life. The art of dancing stands at the source of all the arts that express themselves first in the human person. The art of building or architecture is the beginning of all the arts that lie outside the person, and in the end they unite. Of woman as a real human being with sexual needs and sexual responsibilities, morality has often known nothing. The byproduct is sometimes more valuable than the product. The prevalence of suicide, without doubt, is a test of height in civilization. It means that the population is winding up its nervous and intellectual system to the utmost point of tension and that sometimes it snaps. Man lives by imagination. The greatest task before civilization at present is to make machines what they ought to be, the slaves, instead of the masters of men. What we call morals is simply blind obedience to words of command. Still, whether we like it or not, the task of speeding up the decrease of the human population becomes increasingly urgent. It has always been difficult for man to realize that his life is all an art. It has been more difficult to conceive it so than to act it so, for that is always how he has more or less acted it. No act can be quite so intimate as the sexual embrace. The mathematician has reached the highest rung on the ladder of human thought. There has never been any country at every moment so virtuous and so wise that it has not sometimes needed to be saved from itself. When love is suppressed, hate takes its place. A man must not swallow more beliefs than he can digest. Thinking in its lower grades is comparable to paper money, and in its higher forms it is a kind of poetry. The parents have not only to train their children, it is of at least equal importance that they should train themselves. There is a very intimate connection between hypnotic phenomena and religion. Men who know themselves are no longer fools. They stand on the threshold of the door of wisdom. If men and women are to understand each other, to enter into each other's nature with mutual sympathy, and to become capable of genuine comradeship, the foundation must be laid in youth. The romantic embrace can only be compared with music and with prayer. It is only the great men who are truly obscene. If they had not dared to be obscene, they could never have dared to be great. One can know nothing of giving aught that is worthy to give unless one also knows how to take. The more rapidly a civilization progresses, the sooner it dies for another to rise in its place. For every fresh stage in our lives, we need a fresh education, and there is no stage for which so little educational preparation is made as that which follows the reproductive period. Failing to find in women exactly the same kind of sexual emotions as they find in themselves, men have concluded that there are none there at all. In the early days of Christianity, the exercise of chastity was frequently 
combined with the close and romantic intimacy of affection between the sexes, which shocked austere moralists. The average husband enjoys the total effect of his home, but is usually unable to contribute any of the details of work and organization that make it enjoyable. The husband, by primitive instinct, partly, certainly by ancient tradition, regards himself as the active partner in matters of love and his own pleasure as legitimately the prime motive for activity. The relation of the individual person to the species he belongs to is the most intimate of all relations. Every man of genius sees the world at a different angle from his fellows, and there is his tragedy.